Hi everyone, it's Michael. Um, so I have another very interesting problem for you today. Um, as usual, I found it on the uh, Art of Problem Solving Forum. Um, like many of the problems I, I show here, probably most of them. Um, so usually I don't like to do problems where one of the angles has to be a specific number. So in this case, angle A is 60 degrees. Um, just because I like geometry problems that are sort of the most general possible that apply to any triangle. Uh, but this one was kind of interesting and I learned a little bit from it. So I figured I might as well post it. Um, so if you um, want to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm going to go over the solution. Um, so we have a triangle ABC with angle A equal to 60 degrees. Um, the bisector of angle B meets side AD at C and the bisector of angle C meets side AB at E. And we want to show that the reflection of A over DE lies on BC. So I didn't actually draw the reflection of A over DE um, because if I did, um, because the software is basically perfect at drawing, um, you would actually see that reflection lie right on BC. So you might think that it was Con sort of already constructed to lie on BC when, when in fact that's what we're trying to prove. That's not a case by construction. So I decided not to actually draw the reflection quite yet. Um, so what's the strategy to solving this? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label the intersection of EC and BD. Um, I'm going to label it as I. And some people just know this. I had to play around with the figure a little bit to figure it out, but it turns out that AEID is a cyclic quadrilateral. And in fact, this is the only place where we use that angle A is 60 degrees. Um, so if angle A is 60 degrees and we want to show that AEID is cyclic, uh, we can do that by an angle chase. Um, so we, we would want to show that angle EID is 120. Um, so here's that angle chase. Uh, so angle EID is equal to angle BIC, uh, which is 180 minus IBC minus ICB. But IBC is half angle B, and ICB is half angle C. And angle B plus C have to add up to 120, because since angle A is 60, um, angle B and C have to add up to 120. So um, half angle B plus half angle C has to add up to 60. So I'm going to use that. So 180 minus IBC minus ICB is 180 minus half B minus half C because B, D, and C are angle bisectors. And as I said before, half B plus half, or angle B plus angle C has to equal to 120. So finally we get that angle EID has to be 120 degrees. So if EID is 120 and angle A is 60, then these two angles add up to 180, so AEID is cyclic. All right, so I'm gonna draw in that circle. So what do we do from here? So the problem says we wanna show the reflection of A over DE lies on BC. So let's say F were the reflection of A over DE. And let's say it really did lie on BC. So we are, we're trying to prove that so we don't know it yet. But let's say it actually did. Um, in that case, we'd, we'd have to have AD equal to DF. Um, so we'd have to have those two segments equal. And not only that, they'd be intercepted by equal angles because we'd have ABD is equal to angle DBF. So if equal segments are intersected by equal angles, um, that would basically mean if this were point F, that would mean that ADFB would have to be cyclic. Um, so we don't know yet that the point F is the reflection of A over DE. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to try to kind of work backwards by we're going to draw the circumcircle of ABD and we're going to let it cut BC at F. And then we want to show that F is indeed the reflection of A over DE. So we don't know yet that it is the reflection. Uh, we're going to try to show that. Okay. 
Um, and we know, like from the argument I just said, we know that 8 equals df. So I'm going to write it out later as a step. Um, so we know that 8 equals df by that argument. Uh, we want to show that AE is equal to EF. Um, but then by the same sort of logic, that would be true if AEFC were cyclic. Um, so we want to show that AEFC is cyclic. So how do we do that? It turns out we can do it by an angle chase, which I'm going to show you. But basically, if we can show that angle EAC, which we know is 60 degrees, but that's uh, somewhat irrelevant, is equal to angle EFB, then that would show that EACF is cyclic. Um, because that would mean that EAC and EFC would add up to 180. So I'm going to start with that angle chase. Um, I'm sorry, before I do that, um, there's one other quadrilateral that I'm going to show is cyclic. So basically from point C, we see that we can use power of a point a whole bunch of times. And this turns out to be um, pretty useful. Um, some of you may just recognize this configuration, but if you have like two um, circles like this and you have one point that passes through the radical axis of the two circles, um, you can use power of a point a bunch of times to find um, many cyclic quadrilaterals. So in this case, we have CI times CE is equal to CD times CA by using power of a point on this circle. And CD times CA is equal to CF times CB um, using power of a point on the bigger circle. And so by transitivity, since CI times CE is equal to CF times CB, so CI times CE is CF times CB, uh, by the converse of power of a point, uh, EIFB has to be cyclic. So I'm going to draw in that circle. And now I'm going to go ahead with the angle chase that I was talking about before to try to show that AEFC is cyclic. So we want to show that angle EFB is equal to angle EAC. Um, and we have, here's the angle chase, angle EFB is equal to angle EIB, um, since EIFB is cyclic as we just showed, and EIB has to be EAD, because in the cyclic quadrilateral EADI, um, the exterior angle is equal to the, the opposite angle of EID in the quadrilateral, which is EAD. So, so, and then EAD is EAC, obviously. So since we have EFB is EAC, that's enough to show that uh, EACF is cyclic because basically we showed that EFB, EFB is the exterior angle of EFC and we, and, and we showed that that's equal to EAC, which is the opposite angle of EFC. Um, and so that shows that these two opposite angles in AEFC are supplementary, which means that AEFC is cyclic. All right, so we're, we're pretty close um, to getting the result. Um, so now I'm going to sort of restate what I mentioned before. So first I'm going to draw that circle AEFC. And yes, I know it overlaps a bunch of the problem and a bunch of my work, but oh well. Um, so... So like I mentioned before, since BD is an angle bisector of ABF, uh, if you look at the circumcircle of ABFD, um, since BD is the, the angle bisector, we have to have uh, AD equal to DF because AD and DF intercept equal angles since ABD is equal to DBF. So AD and DF are two chords subtending, subtending the same angles um, because BD is angle bisector, so they have to be equal. And then by the same sort of logic, um, since if you look at the, this really big circle, since uh, CE bisects ACF, um, the chords AE and EF intercept these equal angles, ACE and ECF. And so AE has to equal EF by the same logic. And so this is enough to show that 
uh, triangle AED has to be congruent to triangle um, FED because AD is DF, AE is EF, and they both share side DE, obviously. Um, so if those two triangles are congruent by side, 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 then it's pretty clear that F has to be the reflection of A over DE. And that pretty much solves the problem because we've shown that F is the reflection of A over DE. It wasn't constructed that way. It was constructed as the intersection of the circumcircle of BAD with BC. But then we showed that that is indeed the reflection of A over DE. And so since we already knew it lied on BC, that solves the problem. So I hope you all enjoyed this problem. Um, I know there were many, many cyclic quadrilaterals. Um, so if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.